and welcome back to Avocet Math. In this video, we're going to go over one of the problems from the previous uh, problem set, this being uh, problem 21 from a recent AMC 12. So uh, let's take a look at what we got here. We have four positive integers, A, B, C, D, uh, that have a product of 8 factorial and satisfy uh, these sets of three equations. And we're looking for uh, the value of A minus D. So uh, just to give you my first impressions of this, this problem, uh, I first noticed that I have uh, four variables and four uh, equations. So that's four variables uh, to, to be solved with four equations. And I do see some possibilities to, to manipulate these equations to get something that may uh, give me some clues as to about what A minus D does. Uh, I can see some opportunities to take some sums and differences of these equations. But the, the one thing that kind of sticks out for me is that uh, while these equations are amenable to sums and differences, the condition that the product equal 8 factorial does not fit in with this kind of structure of equations in any way that I'm familiar with. So that's kind of one strike against uh, trying to solve this set of equations through elimination and, uh, and substitution. And uh, on the converse, the, the thing I do notice is that uh, this uh, grouping of AB plus A plus B BC plus B plus C, CD plus C plus D falls into one of the, uh, the factoring forms that we've gone over in uh, previous uh, videos. And it's a factor form that shows up just about every year on the AMC. So I definitely recognize this, and uh, that's sort of my first hint of, of how I would like to proceed. So let's take a look at how we might do that. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and add 1 to each side of each of these equations and then factor the left side. And what you'll be left with is uh, the following. You'll have that uh, a uh, plus 1 times b plus 1 is equal to 525. And b plus 1, c plus 1, 147. c plus 1, d plus 1, 105. <clears throat> so at this point um, in our... Uh, procedure for for trying to solve these these types of factorable equations we always want to uh, uh, reduce any numbers that we find into some sort of prime factorization form so let's go ahead and try to do that 525 we can divide by 5 so that's uh, 5 times 105 uh, this divides by 5 yet again 5 times 21 and 21 is uh, 3 times 7. So this all together equals 3 times 5 squared times 7. Let's see, 147. Uh, add the digits together. It divides by 3. So let's do that first. Let's divide this by 3. That's 3 times 49. Great. I recognize 49. 7 squared. 105. That's just from before. We find that's uh, 3 times 5 times 7. So already now, I, I think we're on the right track. And the reason why I say that is that we have numbers here which uh, have prime factorizations that are uh, quite uh, convenient. And so that kind of strikes me that uh, we're, we're on the right track here. So uh, I think we're, we're, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and uh, substitute these uh, factors into our equations up above. And the other thing I would do at this point in the, uh, the solution, which you, you may not have to do if, if you're able to keep all this stuff straight, is that uh, instead of dealing with a plus 1 and b plus 1, I'll just substitute uh, a plus 1 for a prime. And that'll make things a little easier for, for my way of thinking. So I'm going to substitute a plus 1 for a prime, b prime for b plus 1, and I'll put in these uh, factors that I've discovered from below. So that's 3 times 5 squared times 7. And we have uh, b prime times uh, c prime is equal to 3 times 7 squared. And c prime times now d prime is equal to 3 times 5 times 7. And that looks pretty, uh, pretty good so far. So now we have a bit of work here. We, we definitely have uh, some, a lot of uh, opportunities to apply the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. But what we find is that we have uh, quite a few ways to approach this. And uh, the way I kind of see the structure of these equations is that uh, the thing that, that strikes out for me 
is that we have this B here, which appears in the first and the second equation, and we have this uh, C term, which appears in the second and the third equation. And uh, to me, that suggests that uh, that the middle equation is probably the one that might be the easiest to work with, or at least to, to, to get a first grip hold on, on solving this set of equations. And uh, the way I see uh, the middle equation is that we have the factors of 3 and two factors of 7, which form the B prime and the C prime. And the way I kind of see this is that we have to divide this factor group into two parts, one of which will form B prime, which has to shift up and appear in the first equation, and the second part, which will form C prime, which shifts down and uh, becomes part of the third equation. And uh, so let's take a look at how this might happen. Uh, since we only have a few possibilities here, we can kind of look at them case by case. And the first case I'd like to look at is, is the, uh, the factor of 7 squared. And uh, looking at this equation, we see that uh, the 7 squared can either uh, go as a single unit to the top equation, or it can go as a single unit to the bottom of the equation, or it would have to split up into two parts. So in this case, I see that uh, the 7 would definitely have to split up into two parts in order to satisfy the first and the third equation. So uh, that seems like a pretty obvious clue there. And then the 3 is not obvious to me as to whether that 3 would go to the top equation or split to the bottom equation. And there's really no clue for me as to which case that would be. So in this case, there's only two possibilities. Um, there may be a clever insight to figure out which it is, but uh, I can pretty much churn through these two possibilities pretty quickly. So at this point in the problem, since I've eliminated it down to two possibilities, I'm just going to go ahead and take a, take a guess. And if it turns out to be wrong, I'll just turn around and, and do the other way. So uh, what I've concluded here is that uh, I think that, uh, that uh, C prime will equal to the uh, 7, uh, B prime will equal to the 3 times the 7, and that leads to A prime, which is just equal to the 5 squared, and then D prime is equal to the 3 times 5. So with that, we can then uh, figure out what the original A values, B values, and C values were by just subtracting 1. So now that leads to A is equal to 24. Here, uh, B would equal to 20. Uh, C would equal to 6. And D would equal to 14. So let's just write those out down here. A, 24. B, 20. C, 6. D, 14. Um, 24 is 2 to the third times 3. B, 2 squared times 5. C, 2 times 3. 2 times 7. Uh, so what do we have here? The multiplication of A, B, C, D is then 5, 2 to the 7th times 3 squared times 5 times 7. And that looks pretty promising. So let's take a look and check uh, what 8 factorial is. It's uh, 2 times 3 times 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So factors of 2, we have great, 2 to the 7th. Factors of 3, 3 squared. Factors of 5, just 1. Factors of 7, just 1. Check. It matches. And the uh, answer that we're looking for is A minus D. So that would be 24 minus 14. So the answer is 10.